There are some even even worse places on the internet than that. <laughs> yeah, you listen to the podcast. <laughs> Welcome to Number One Crude Mistakes, with me, KJ from Crude But Efficient, Glenn from Number One Projects, and Hovar from Behind the Mistakes, who needs to take a chill pill, because he just released another Yay! video, oh. giving it for <laughs> once a week uh, for the last four weeks. Is this a new... Are you starting to do amphetamine or something like that? Or <laughs> I wish. <laughs> just... Down prioritizing sleep. And this is you on COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's uh if this is what's on drugs feels like, I'm not sure if I like it or not. <laughs> I've been burning the candle in every odd direction. <laughs> and a bit on the middle as well. Yeah. Then you get four ends tonight. <laughs> That's nice. So I think the big question about your video is, did have any billionaires stepped up yet, Havard? No, no, uh, no billionaires, um, no semi-billionaires either. But um, there's been a lot of people wishing they were, and then of course uh, I'm hoping <laughs> for someone to winning the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it would be best if that was me myself. But yeah. Yeah, I'm afraid I'm not uh, playing any lottery where you actually can win, win a billion. Uh, dollars that's so yeah <laughs> no that's 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 the problem with having too much maths um if you have <laughs> done a bit of statistics you know it's like hmm, it's not the best place to put your money no not really but then again someone has to win <laughs> <laughs> and it's always the bank so the thing is to start your own lottery yeah so when do we do that? I was thinking, if the bank always win, why don't we just skip the lottery and we start a bank? I mean, you, of course, you you need a certain amount of money, but then you start lending it out. And of course, if you keep your interest rates just below any other bank, and you could actually say that we do a calculated risk. It's not like you're in, you're out uh, based on some algorithms. We actually look at your economy and if you can prove that uh, you can pay, then of course we can uh, lend you the money. And of course, it seems to work for the banks. So I think how hard can it be? <laughs> <laughs> we might have to change the name because number one crude mistakes finances <laughs> <laughs> sends up some red flags, I think. Uh. Yeah, it would be hard to tap into those governmental subsidiaries <laughs> with a name like that. Yeah, oh, I think we'll have people queuing up. It's yeah, I mean, uh, we would of course favorize those who need to lend money to buy tools. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tools, you say? Okay, check. You're in the tier one already. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a minute. What tools do you what What tools do you want money for? Oh, Festo? No, you're out. <laughs> <laughs> so, how has uh, everyone's week been? Glenn, what have you been up to? Everything. I have been up to everything. everything. <laughs> okay, that was a short answer. Good. Yep. That's settled. <laughs> Care to elaborate? So, since we last spoke, I uh, went to bed and uh, woke up, had some jam and toast. You don't want everything, do you? Sorry. <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll, show, I'll show on it down. No, go on. Go. What? Yeah, so, something in between those two, I would say, is, is optimal. What kind of jam? Or most importantly, do you use butter before jam? Oh, yeah, of course. You use butter before okay, jam. Nice. Or it's not a heat. <laughs> well, I, I, I've heard about people not using butter and then just putting jam straight on. And it's homemade strawberry jam. Oh, yeah. Okay. There's a, there's a lot of pluses nice. here. Everything's better with butter. Yeah, Definitely. actually, yeah. <laughs> Can't think of a single thing not being... At least everything that you put in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> KJ could easily be swayed to the other side then. <laughs> Where did KJ go? Well, a guy with a van and a stick of butter. <laughs> Oh, 
All right. This turned weird. Carry on. I think we're on a constant spiral in weirdness downward. <laughs> it sounds like. So do you want to continue spiraling, Glenn? <laughs> I'm not quite ready yet. <laughs> Just give me a moment. And while we're oh, waiting children. for Glenn to compose himself, uh, how about you, KJ? How was your week? Uh, it's been it's been fine. Uh, I've been uh, getting some nice progress on the Christmas tree stand. I actually welded most of it together and did uh, the leak test yesterday, and it uh, it, it held water, so that was nice. Uh, so my weld can't be that crappy. That's fantastic news. How's the video coming on? I have a lot of footage. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've done a, I've done a a rough a rough clean out of all the no, this is not, never going to be used uh, clips and thrown those away at least. Uh, so that's I mean it's a start of editing I think. Uh, but yeah, I, I feel a little time pressure to actually get the stand ready. Because there is a deadline of when we get the the tree, we need to have it ready. Otherwise, we don't have anywhere to put the tree. Um, so I guess editing will come the week before Christmas or something like that. So is this your first ever tree then? What did you put it in? What did you put it in last year? Uh, the old Christmas tree stand that, that we broke last year. Oh, it broke. Oh, sorry, I missed that. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, really thin uh, uh, sheet metal sheets, and one of those. Yeah, I, w- I think it was spot welded together, and one of those just uh, came apart. So it it worked kinda, but it it felt even uh, flimsier than usual. So yeah, it, we probably could have used it for a couple of years, but then we would have need to tie the tree to a wall or something like that to keep it upright. <laughs> didn't feel safe so now i'm going for a sturdier one i i, I weighed it uh today and it just uh around 20 kilos is the stand so hopefully that will be enough to keep the tree upright yeah that's quite a chunk of metal isn't it it definitely is <laughs> and last night i i was up till after midnight playing uh, D, so i'm a bit bit tired if i'm a bit slow to respond to tonight you know that's why. <laughs> is that Dungeons and Dragons? Yes, yes. Is that a pen and paper game still, or? How do you... Yeah, but we do it online, so it's uh, you have quite uh, quite a digital digital help uh, for a lot of things uh, because I, I play with uh, guys from the UK mostly. Okay. Well, that's kind of um, I never tried. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons, and I, I'm afraid to do so because I was tricked into World of Warcraft for a trial run by a friend of mine several years ago, and well, I spent quite a few hours in that as well. So I don't think I can stumble into a new gaming experience. <laughs> but that being said, my <laughs> wife's cousin actually, and for the last couple of times, he's uh, brought his uh, virtual reality goggles. So I tried those this weekend for the first time. And turns out I'm one of those guys who get really dizzy when using them. So it, it doesn't <laughs> bode well for the uh, FPV drone I'm <laughs> drooling over. But hopefully that will be <laughs> a bit different. But I see that can have an impact on Dungeons and Dragons as well when you have that combined with gaming with people online and then you can have like artificial intelligence doing this um, layover with graphics based on the gameplay or something. I I see that this can really evolve or maybe the people playing are so traditional that they don't want to, but I guess then you have two different camps. I mean, if it worked, it would be really nice. But considering how buggy and yeah, bad UI everything is that that is useful for some for something like this. Uh, I mean, it's hard enough to get the video call working with a lot of people on the platforms that actually 
have this thing integrated. Yeah. So I'm a bit skeptical that it will get off the ground. Um, I, if it was like a plugin for for Teams or Zoom or something like that, a, a huge platform that's actually <laughs> that actually works, then it then it could be something. I think. Yeah. Because it would be nice to actually be feel like you were sitting together and not just staring into a screen. Yeah. That might keep you from fiddling with stuff as well and doing other things when it's not your, not your turn. He says fiddling with stuff on his desk. <laughs> yeah. Well, God knows what Glenn is fiddling with. I can't see him. I just hear weird noises from <laughs> his workshop. Yeah. He's taking his pants off, I'm sure. Are you getting funny noises from me? I just when you speak. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Where have you got to? Uh, you continue tell, telling us of your week. Okay, so it all started at the weekend. We had Christmas party, well, a birthday party for 90 year old Nan. Lovely meal out. All the outdoor Christmas decorations up, ready. And working on the office. I've been flat out on that. But then the real challenging part was that I decided to stop doing that and work on the TNM challenge. We know the Makers Challenge. So, uh, yeah, that's, um, that's been taking up a lot, of, a lot of my weekend as well. What's the deadline for that one? The 10th. It's not happening. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sunday, yeah. A week on Sunday, right? This Sunday. This Sunday. Really? Yeah, it's the fifth today, so... Okay, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> if, you're, if you're going to apply maths to it, that'll work. <laughs> the, yeah. the joys of being self-employed. Sorry, I, I have a calendar, so I'm <laughs> cheating. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so let's, uh, the, I've finished the challenge itself. I've just got to um, edit the video. So that's two projects I've got videoed almost, but... Uh, Nothing ah, out on the YouTube. The classical yet. almost videoed completely. And the joy of editing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I um I realize I also have a lot of footage for my next video, and I realized half of that footage is very much the same footage as the last video I put out on the same theme because I think it was the last uh Hellcorder <laughs> video I said, all right, the the wind chest is done. It's just some minor wiring left, but it's enough for a video. And I posted it then. I spent weeks now <laughs> doing the wiring. And of course, that's the major of the footage that I have. So the next video where I kind of queued up <laughs> that we was done with this and we could move on. <laughs> well, it's going to be a two thirds replay before we get to the assembly of uh, the case itself, which is uh, just a few minutes footage. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, previously on behind the mistakes yeah it's like 10, 10 minutes of what we've seen before but that being said the benefit of tedious and repetitive work you get kind of decent to it so the crimping on this uh, small dupont connector for like uh uh what's it called pegboards and uh, so on it's uh, i'm getting really decent at it but it has a limited use. I mean, it's well, outside the workshop, that is. Uh, are you screaming uh, close to insanity with doing the same thing over and over and over again? Yes. I hate the number 25 <laughs> or any <laughs> derivative of that. I mean, uh, <laughs> any any signal cable, it needs a ground and it needs a live wire. That's... 25 times 2, and then, of course, you have all the switches. You're going to double up on that, and, of course, uh, it's the odd uh, one that you just fuck up and you have to redo, and, yeah. <laughs> so it's um, hopefully the last time I'll do this, but, well, we, we all know that's not true. <laughs> so <laughs> In the near future, perhaps. Yeah. But I've started to just realizing, okay, I've, I've cut two projects already uh there's one i won't be able to do before christmas and then the three northern makers challenge i just realized i'm not even going to try that one so i'm trying to prioritize before christmas hey havard 
How's the gang coming on? Um, we have made an effort removing some uh, glue residue uh, and getting it ready for painting. But that's about it. So we'll see. I'll have... <laughs> I'll actually have a few hours home alone this upcoming weekend, so I might do a stint then, uh, doing cutting of the acoustic panels and so on, and dry fitting those on the wall. Oh, you're just going to go in the workshop and play with your helicopter. We all know it. That, that's the <laughs> that's the danger, of course. But I could always queue something up for the CNC, so then I can do both. But it was really nice to actually get all the panels done because it's a pain in the ass when you're going to do routing on two sides because you have to have to do the first side and you have to have some guide holes so you can drill the guide holes in a plate so that when you flip it over, you get the exact coordinates just on the back side of the plate. So every panel that I'm routing, I have to do three separate operations. So what I thought I was going to knock out on one day took me four. (laughs) And I realized that the supplier of plywood is out and I had the exact amount that I needed. So I could not fuck up any of them because the plywood that I bought was on sale uh, quite a while back. And Now they're like crazy expensive if I'm going to get 15 millimeter plywood in that quality. I think one full sheet of plywood costs about 250 euros or something like that. And the small plates that I bought, uh, they don't have those in those sizes anymore. So it's, yeah, that would have been a showstopper. (laughs) It's insane. The last sheet of... The last sheet of plywood I got, just from the local um, DIY store, an 18 mil um, sheet of plywood, um, 120 by 240, full sheet. And um, it's not renowned for being the best quality, but this stuff was spot on. It was only 40 quid a sheet. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, that's that's doable. And of course... I think one of the major suppliers of plywood in this region, um, they only sell to companies. Of course, now that I own a company, I can actually register an account and then uh, was looking into that just to see what kind of prices they offer. Um, Then again, it's probably just going there to get one sheet of plywood twice a year it's it's not the customer that's going to rack up the most discounts (laughs) but yeah it is insanely expensive at least if you want the good quality on both sides like the furniture quality uh, plywood of course you can get the cheap kind but it's splinters and it's really crappy and glued on the other side so yeah, that's not fun. When you have been spoiled for a while working with the good stuff, then going back to the other is really bad. And I've tried some cheaper plywood and also doing that on the router. If you are unlucky, hitting a bad spot, or you're going at a certain depth where you're reaching a layer where they skimped on the quality, uh, it really fucks up the cut, and then you have to start all over again. And then it becomes just an expensive bonfire. <laughs> I'm not so keen on on material that costs a lot because it hurts so bad when you mess up, which I feel like I I mostly do some kind of some kind of mistakes. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I guess the 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 tight assed part of me always wins when it comes <laughs> to getting material. Are you finding yourself making less and less mistakes? No, I, I, perhaps I'm better at at nipping them in the bud early or covering them up, but I still make mistakes. It's not like uh, I I made a mistake and just keep going and keep going and keep, keep going until it's not salvageable. Uh, not that much, anyhow. No. I think that's uh, a common thing. Uh, amongst makers of course if you 
if you're a professional woodworking and you're working on like a rocking chair or something that you intend to perfect and then sell several of them, of course, you will work until you got that nailed, but or preferably glued, probably. But yeah. Um, but as a maker, you, you make something because you partly want to see if you can pull it off. And then, of course, you do some mistakes and then you say, OK, this is good enough. And you it, you come to a certain point that I feel that I mastered this now to 70 percent and that's good enough. And then you move on. You want to try something else. So I'm continuously doing mistakes, but new ones yeah. all the time. And then just racking up a basic knowledge at a 70 percent level. Yeah. And then you you go back to something that you that you were good enough like six months ago, and then you realize that all those skills are degraded on that in that time. So you're not as good as you were. So you have to, it's always one step back before it's two steps forward. Yeah, or you go back, and in the meantime, you got some new tools, and you realized, oh, it's in the tools, <laughs> and then you you pull it off even better, and you just realize that the people doing it actually got better tools than you had first time. Around. Yeah. Yeah, but that was when I when I bought my auto darkening welding helmet. Everything got so much easier when you can actually see what you were doing and not just trying to guess uh, guess where to aim. It does make a massive difference, doesn't it? Those yeah auto darkening. Uh... Yeah, it feels like cheating, but but it's it's a nice feeling. So <laughs> oh, I remember. Oh just started reminiscing from the time I got uh, like welding blindness for the first time and yeah only time as well and uh, it was a project at school and we did some welding and we didn't realize that you also could get it if someone was like welding in your peripheral view Mm -hmm. and of course you were in the workshop all day and I didn't notice anything of it and went to bed of course, I was living in a flat uh, alone and just woke up in the middle of the night and my eyes were hurting. And I was like, you could feel the tears running and everything. And of course, I was sleeping in the dark, so didn't think much of it. And then when you turned on the light and like, I can't, I still can't see anything. But of course, I knew instantly what it was. And of course who could I call my, uh, my parents or family were like hours away. Uh, and of course they couldn't do anything. Uh, I couldn't go anywhere because I couldn't see anything. So that, that was a weird day experiencing how it is to be blind. Mm-hmm. And then I think it was two hours later, a friend of mine, he did the exact same thing <laughs> <laughs> and he, he had to skip a day just because you couldn't see anything. <laughs> oh, that's so scary, waking up and not be able to see. Did it uh, come back gradually, or was it a long time with nothing, so to say? It it, it was gradually, and I think it's, of course, I think this the eyesight came back a lot faster than... Uh, the comfort of having your eyes open so <laughs> of course I, at some point and v- very quickly i could open my eyes and just okay my sight is improving but it's painful as hell and the tears started running so you would rather just keep them closed because then the that was the more comfortable option but of course when you i knew what it was and when i realized okay it's, it's getting better quite rapidly so of course i'm not going to be out for days so then you kind of feel more relaxed about it but yeah it's uh of course it's not something i want to do (laughs) over again voluntarily i'm not sure i would have spotted it that quickly what the reason for it i would just be shit scared i think oh yeah yeah you should be should protect yourself and others apparently yeah, I try to do that when I weld outside. I put up a little a, a something of a screen at least, so I'm not throwing bright arcs in people's faces. Yeah, but I mean, you're welding outside in the snow <laughs> in the winter time in Sweden. There, there are no people outside. 
except that one weirdo doing welding. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I wouldn't put up too much of a screen. <laughs> yeah, the, the 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 road outside our house is not used that much for traffic, which which makes it perfect for people walking their dog and for people learning how to drive. So the the local driving school, <laughs> it's, it's a, and we our house is just in the uh, a part where the road goes up a bit and and curves. So it's a lot of uh, starting uh, on an uh, incline and that sort of thing. So we're we're thinking about uh, having uh, some sort of uh, grading system, just giving them the A plus, B minus for how they're driving. <laughs> But that might be rude, so yeah. I am gonna leave and move everything into the workshop, and um, I'll rejoin and see if it makes any difference. You two carry on chatting. I just mounted uh, my pad on the wall in the workshop, uh, strategically placed because I'm thinking now, at least the oldest is so old that. She actually understand what not to touch, um, and so on. So I can actually bring her with me. So if if we if it's just the two of us and she want to watch some show or something, then we can just go down and she can sit in my workshop. And of course, if she gets curious on anything, then of course she can join making something. So that's uh, I'm looking forward to I get both kids over that threshold, and then I need to find a way to get them on board with the workshop being a haven where they can go to relax. So I should make like a nook with like a, a bean bag or something that they can really yeah. like a, a kid's lounge in the corner. That would be nice. <laughs> Build a little fort under one of the, one of the tables or something like that. A little cozy yeah. place to, to sit. Not too cozy because then I wouldn't get anything done. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'd, you have to build it kid size so you don't fit. <laughs> yeah. That's one of the the projects that I want to do, but I need to wait for the kids to be a little bit older, but of course up on the loft we have one entry point and that's in the hallway, but every time you want to move stuff up there for deep storage, you have to do a, like 20 meter of crawl space to get to the end so everything just piles up as close to the entry (laughs) as possible of course um but we changed the ladder uh this year and they were relatively cheap and easy to install so i was thinking i could do that in both the children's room and then i could build a compartment over each room of course, oh, yeah. while they are young, that can be their secret hideout. So they could just pull down a ladder and they can go up there and they can have a bookshelf and a light and they can just crawl up there and uh, be for themselves. But in the long run, that would actually be nice in all the bedrooms to have a separate access point to uh, the loft space for uh, yeah. deep storage and so on. And then if, if you have two rooms with both, access to the loft then that would be a secret path between the rooms as well so you can use... yeah you could have that and of course you could have and that's one of my fantasies from when i was a child like having a like a spy phone or a walkie-talkie that would be the ultimate and i'm just waiting for the next road trip with a different family or a situation where you're going with two cars because now you can get decent quality walkie-talkies for an acceptable price. And of course, I wanted that my entire childhood, but I never <laughs> got one. But now I could have it. And of course, you have cell phones and everything, but nothing That's beats, not the same uh, thing. Like, uh, go left at the next turnover. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Copy that. <laughs> That's a push button to talk. It's brilliant. So, yeah. And I think some of them have... I, th- I think they cost about a thousand Norwegian crowns and they have like eight kilometers of decent range. Of course, if you're in a city landscape, it, it shortens, but still you could be like walking around. And then of course I- I'll go in this direction and check out and you go there and you could actually have a decent reach still. And then you can do all the code names and of course people will look weird at you. But uh, <laughs> you might want to hear Desert Eagle that. for Fox and Nutcracker. It's like, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs>
Or we could do that for Maker Central next year. Could have one each. That would be nice. <laughs> That's actually a good one because, I mean, uh, the, the signal isn't that great. And, I mean, the UK being outside of the EU, it's not not as simple as just your your phone just keeps working as it is in other places. Uh, so something that's not reliant on the Wi-Fi or a telecom signal, that that's a really good call, actually. Yeah, I, I will bring my walkie-talkies. So where did you buy them? Biltema or Eula? <laughs> uh, Shell Company. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that would be my third go-to. <laughs> yeah. That was because I, I worked there when I was at uni. And then when I... When I finished uni and got my my first proper job and my first proper paycheck i got back and okay who wants to serve me <laughs> i'm gonna buy a lot of stuff because at that place we had uh, the more uh the more items you sold and the higher and the the no the total amount of money gave you a bonus so i i bought oh. stuff for like Three and a half thousand crowns, I think, and it was like twenty five items or something. So, so the one that ringed up got a really nice bonus that month. Because that's that's the shop I really like. I mean, not the front part of the business where they're selling junk, uh, like more or less. Ether, it, it Ethernet gets worse cables and, worse. and yeah. yeah. But I would like to be able to go. To the back, but then again, their web page is really good, so you can get a list with just numbers and you just hand it in. But of course, I have a longing, like yearn, when I see all this little like rows and rows and small containers with components like resistors and diodes and everything. So it yeah. would be nice to just go and have a look because I would probably make them a lot of money if they just allowed me back there because I would just go and look at stuff and like. Ooh, that would be nice. That I could use for something, probably. So I'd end up spending a lot more money. Yeah, the that the thing is that it's uh, I was I I'm helped build one of the stores, so we put everything on those shelves and not in those containers. And just to be sure that you don't mix stuff up, you you take something from container twelve when you were supposed to take it from container eleven, and everything is spread out. So we got one. Uh, one kind of resistor on one shelf, on the other kind of resistor on another shelf. So it's everything oh, is spread out <laughs> in, to the entire. So it's <laughs> nothing like, oh yeah, I want one of these. Uh, some I look for something close to it, and it should be right next to it. So everything is spread out, and you yeah. really need. The, if you don't have the computer, you are lost. <laughs> well, it's kind of understandable because if you go to like Biltema or something like that, and people they take something out and it just randomly throw it back on the aisle like they're playing darts or something so it's a pain in the ass finding things i always thought that that would be something i could uh, i could work at a store and just walk around and make sure that stuff were lying in the right place just fronting stuff as it said just making things tidy on the shelves and hanging up stuff and unpacking i think that if i ever burn out i would like a job like that just just going around tidying stuff and helping people find things in stores. I think I could I could do that. <laughs> then then you can get on board with my idea because I always wanted um like a maker's superstore like that mm, has yeah. everything on a component level and uh, of course you have some hardware stores that have like 1% of that but I would like just go all like niche towards makers but of course that's it's probably not a large enough customer base to uh, to run a warehouse of the size that I want because imagine that scene from Indiana Jones, that <laughs> size of a warehouse just for makers, stuff, tools, components, whatever. And of course, uh, having a lot of things sitting on a shelf. It's not good business, but yeah. It's really, really tricky though, isn't it? Trying to get Trying to get everything that the maker needs. There's so many variants of maker, isn't there? Yeah. I mean, yeah, and of course, half the shop would also be a recycling facilities or something. So you also have dumpsters and dumpsters so where yeah. people could just dive <laughs> in to find things. I mean, what you really need that it's a really rich person building their own storage 
where they let other people in to buy stuff. Yeah. But, but, so anybody, but, but, anybody you wouldn't let in? Uh, well, that's almost everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's where I'm at with that, but, I think. But that being said, I, I almost uh, blew my cover at work tonight because someone was discussing, well, one guy, he had ordered some plastic straws for something uh, online. And then another guy chipped in, where do you go to get, I need an electric motor uh, of a certain size. And it's like, no, I can't really get into this discussion because I, it would very fast end up like, but how do you know and why do you get that stuff? And so I just <laughs> sat there while they discussed uh, all the wrong places of getting an electric motor. <laughs> You're such a coward. <laughs> why, why Why? did you not just come out, Havard? Or make something up? It's... <laughs> yeah. You don't even... <laughs> yeah, because then when they found out, oh, he's actively been lying to us for several years. No, but I mean, you could describe something you've done in the past. Not <clears throat> Well, I, I'm putting together 12 recorders to make an amplified. Maybe not start with that. Uh, uh, 25. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Dear. I should do some boring reference projects, actually, just uh, to have something to uh, <laughs> default uh, on when you're doing the like the casual uh, small talk, yeah. <laughs> It could have been a million and one things you could have told your colleagues to, you know, I'm just making something at home. I'm putting something together for the kids. Yeah. Yeah, the kids are a good thing to, to yeah. blame stuff on yeah, like while you're doing kids, things. Uh... <laughs> like going home early from it's a party. A, it's a science day. project at kindergarten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do tell us about what is the science project you're working on with the kids? <laughs> I'm a YouTuber. With that two kilowatts electric we motor. Are... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and some rocket fuel. And... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we did a uh, a little project with my daughter the other day, well, the other week, and um, it started off so that it was supposed to start at a friend's house, then it would come to my daughter, and then it would go to another uh, kid to be finished off. And um, the other kid that started it was uh, my friend uh, Steve's daughter. And this it's supposed to be a volcano, and it literally came back as a tube stuck into a paper plate in a cardboard <laughs> box. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I picked it up, he said, this is not going to look the same when it comes, when I see this next, is it? I said, it's bloody well not. This looks shit. <laughs> It went, it went off to the I next mean, kid, all paper mache and papered and uh, painted and uh, looking like a proper volcano. <laughs> what, was there anything oh, left of would... the, the thing you got? Oh, no, I completely hid it. <laughs> it was still <laughs> in there. It was in there. You didn't yeah. throw that away. <laughs> no. <laughs> and just say, yeah, it's in there, buried somewhere. <laughs> oh, that would be it, it, not a challenge, but a collaboration. You pick 10 makers and then... The overall goal is, let's build a Rube Goldberg machine. And then the first one, just start building something. And then it just shipped it off to the, uh, the next guy to just add to it. And then just see what you <laughs> end up with in the end. That would be interesting. That would be so really you think cool. you start at one point and then everyone builds on. I, I thought that, so yeah, you're going to get a uh, 100 gram weight falling down on your piece, build something that do, does something with that, and then you tell the next person what they're going to get, and everyone builds their own stuff, and then you meet up and put everything together and see if it works. <laughs> That's also a... <laughs> I think that would go quicker. Otherwise, people would work on it indefinitely, and nothing would ever get done. Oh, you could put a time limit on it. <laughs> yeah. Time limit and a deadline where everybody at this place where everybody meets up or something and then you could uh, of course you needed an ex you shouldn't meet up at someone having a workshop because there there will always be the, the last minute adjustments and that could be done over a case of beer yeah. on a weekend I'm in <laughs> alright so that you just need seven more people <laughs> I mean, well, that's K a KJ's not agreed yet <laughs> No, I'm definitely on board. I mean, this sounds like a really nice maker meetup. 
everyone gets an assignment beforehand, which they can spend how much time they like on in their own workshop. And then you meet up for a weekend at a place and, and try to fit this together, this contraption who does really, doesn't do anything other than being a series of things. Well, and then you try to make it work. Hang on a minute. This could, this could actually become a reality if we keep it small. Do I mean, we just all, have to we're... have to have enough makers close enough together to actually be able to meet up in a where where would people be meeting up soon, do you think, <laughs> all together? <laughs> Round about May time. <laughs> any, any ideas? Yeah. On that topic, what's the maker scene in Stockholm? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm sadly not in that loop. Because I mean, I mean, we we have a a really nice makerspace, I think, but I've never been. Uh, I I met Eric, the uh, I think leader of that makerspace at Maker Central, because uh, I mean, I found the maker community when we got our second kid. So it's like it's a no go to hang out at a makerspace somewhere. Just I mean, it's it's hard enough to steal away an hour here and there and go down in the in the basement to do stuff. Uh, so, yeah. more change soon, boys. When your kids get a little bit older, it's all good again. Yeah. When I'm talking about the maker scene, I, I mean the the people in the maker community, and because also in Oslo you have a couple of maker spaces, and one of them are really good, but they have opening hours from like. Eight o'clock in the morning until sixteen hundred after in the afternoon, and I mean I'm at work then. Yeah. If I'm going to use a holiday uh, just uh, to go in there to use one of their equipment, that's ending up costing me a lot of money because I have to forfeit <laughs> my own pay first, and then travel in there with the huge sheets of whatever. So, yeah, it's it's really not an option. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I was getting to that. That I don't really know any makers in my local area. I, I'm sure they're out there, but I don't know about them. I mean, I know people in Norway and in England and Germany <laughs> and Australia and the States and <laughs> every bloody where except around Home. me. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> On that subject, do you know any makers around me, KJ, so you know everybody else away from you? <laughs> I only know what countries people live in, not where in that country. Uh, okay. <laughs> you had that meet-up recently. You're only in, what were you, about an hour away? Stockholm was your near your, your middle ground, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I basically live in Stockholm. I mean, in the, in the yeah. outskirts of it. If everyone, anyone wants a meet-up? Just come to Stockholm. <laughs> I'm here most of the time. My workshop is open. What about you, Havard? You you must have makers nearby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just recently discovered that Nerdforge is practically a neighbor. So <laughs> <laughs> haven't met them though, but I haven't met my other neighbors as well. So. <laughs> you just have to go over and borrow a cup of sugar or what's the maker equivalent? A cup of epoxy or <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I need some paint. Some, I, uh, I heard you got some. <laughs> I need some purple paint for a project. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about dyeing my hair. <laughs> well, I have been. Uh, through Instagram, I've come to know quite a few makers, but I mean, most of them are located far away still. Uh, but there, are, there is a few people in Oslo, which is an hour away, roughly. What about Garage oh, Avenger? Where's he? He's an hour away uh, in the other direction. But okay. So you could yeah. be the hub for that. <laughs> yeah, I could be the hub for that. Yeah. It's just you have to be social. <laughs> is that the big hurdle? <laughs> that's, that's where the problem is. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the Achilles heel there. Um, <laughs> no, I can be social. I've yeah. heard some, some say. Sometimes. It has a time limit on it, though, doesn't it? Just yeah. for me. And that that <laughs> that being said, it is longer for people I like, <laughs> yes. for other makers, yes. when there's uh, some decent information to be shared. But if it's small talking with someone I'm not 
connecting with like right off the bat is like yeah. i'm starting to looking for an exit straight away <laughs> so, yeah um, yeah i'm the, i'm the same but i i found that at, at maker central that i was small talking and mingling and just hanging around people <laughs> i i hadn't met in real life before for the entire week and i never felt that fatigue that i can get of like 15 minutes at a party i don't want to be at yeah. meeting people <laughs> so it's really when you when it's people that when it's your people when it's your family so to say then it's <laughs> it's a different thing yeah well that's uh of course i i learned that too late of course and it it was a uh, good help in having children because the threshold of I think I've said it before. It's like if I'm at a party or a, a gathering where I really don't want to be, like, well, like, you are 40 years old. If you don't want to be here, you could just leave. And then I have this inner <laughs> monologue and, yeah, I could leave. So why don't you? I'm gonna, I'm gonna. And then, of course, I spent <laughs> half an hour talking to myself in the corner, probably looking <laughs> weird. But at some point, I'm just fuck it and then i just leave and i feel so good about myself it's like a, a small toddler just tiptoeing away <laughs> i left and there's nothing they can do about it i have to i have to go through a negotiation with my wife if i want to leave early yeah. every um every one of her work stews for the last five years i've not drunk i've decided to drive just in case there's an opportunity to get out of there sooner <laughs> yeah. And ev every year I'm there to the bitter end and sober, which makes it even worse. <laughs> uh, so this year well, I just thought, fuck it, I'm going to get pissed. <laughs> my wife is the social one, uh, and that makes it really easy for me to just volunteer uh, to not drink and also to just leave when it's ready to put the kids to bed. So. We can go and be social and I can fake it up to a certain level. And then it's like, oh, okay, but the kids need to be put to bed and so on. <laughs> so I just take them and go home, put them to bed, and then I'm out of it, which is nice. You used to get that um, excuse from a lot of people. I've got to get back to look after the dog. <laughs> <laughs> but your dog's yeah. been dead for two years. <laughs> <laughs> I have noticed he's been looking poorly. That's why I wanted to get back. <laughs> <laughs> so any upcoming Christmas parties for you all? Just a work work thing this Friday. Yeah. Meal, drinks. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of thing. Classic uh, Swedish traditional julebord, as we say, the Christmas dinner. That's uh, the smorgasbord of all the stuff that no one really eats anymore okay <laughs> i mean it's a it's a lot what would that of, include uh, um s alcohol sexual harassment uh <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all the fun these stuff. parties never end well <laughs> <laughs> we try to keep the sexual harassment on a on the low side but uh, otherwise it's just uh, a lot of uh, a lot of booze and uh, meatballs and sausages and a lot of yeah a lot of a lot of food more or less yeah nice KJ's there in the corner. Somebody come and sexually harass me, please. <laughs> <laughs> I usually leave early because nothing ever happens. Got to get back for the dog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that I've never had. <laughs> we had uh, we had a session uh, at work in September, uh, which led to HR saying that we should maybe not go overboard for the Christmas party this year. So we're keeping it low key. So we're just Jesus. going out one afternoon, uh, playing uh, some games, having some beer, which really sounded good to me because the fixed seating with all the Christmas food and everything and everyone dressing up uh, and then you have a huge venue and everybody is talking louder and louder. I just, oh, I cringe just <laughs> thinking about it. But this setting, it actually was... Kind of nice. I thought I'll give it a try this year. Um, but then, of course, last minute they changed the day for the day after. And that's the same day the Christmas party for my wife. So then, oh no, I can't go. So <laughs> <laughs> <I'm staying. laughs> HR sounds like a proper fun place at your work. 
Yeah. A little siren go off before they arrive. Woo, woo, front police alert, front <laughs> police alert. <laughs> but yeah, but still but I, have... I can understand it because they had a two day workshop where they flew people in from all over the country and all expenses paid and so on. So yeah, they, they spent ah, okay. a few millions there, I guess. So I'm understanding that uh, they're looking at the budget and <laughs> maybe we should try to be reasonable. <laughs> yeah. When I was starting my proper work, uh, so to say, it was a thing from HR that in this Christmas party, it, we're not uh, giving you any hard liquor. It's only beer and wine <laughs> because we have <laughs> had some incidents uh, in the years before <laughs> we were tra- transitioning to uh to a little more more cleaned up thing i guess yeah. not that much need to go and have a proper word with the boss and that sort of thing <laughs> i've been lucky i guess most places i worked at all the christmas parties has been decent of course people have gotten a bit drunk and hooking up in the stationary room or whatnot but it's been like all good so <laughs> <laughs> you had a, a little uh, twinkle in your eye there when you said people have been hooking up anyway moving on <laughs> <laughs> how's the christmas part is that at your work then <laughs> oh quiet very very quiet <laughs> yeah it's a uh, it's quite a nice affair though i don't i'm never in a rush to get away from my christmas party being, being Do you have to ask yourself, or always <laughs> <laughs> out of making? It's my favourite hobby. <laughs> but I mean, it can't be harassment if you're into it. No, oh, no, it's like <laughs> it's like Havard has his little uh, conversation with himself at the parties. I like to have a little conversation. It's like, stop it, do it again, stop it, stop it, do it again. <laughs> 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 no, I've not been to. I, I mean, I do remember going to uh, work studios when I was employed. And the last um, employment place was a landscaping firm. And uh, we would used to go out, we'd get pissed, and we'd spend the whole evening talking about work. And I thought, where's the fun in this? <laughs> <laughs> we literally had nothing to talk about out of work. So, yeah, yeah that's rubbish. kind of sad. Yeah. yeah I'm not the... Uh, one of the guys was really into his football. I don't like football, so that was a non-starter, really. And yeah, no drink and work, and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're yeah. you're there to to actually do work to get paid. You're not there because it's fun. Hopefully, <laughs> you enjoy doing what you do for a living, but you're not there to have fun. No, <laughs> I've had some do fun days at don't... work. I don't remember who said it. It it was in a like a public meeting or a, like a town hall meeting at work or something, and someone just stood up and just said, "Let's not kid ourselves." I mean, no one here would turn up tomorrow if the pay just <laughs> didn't come through. I mean, <laughs> yes, it might be fun days, uh, but if you stop paying us, we wouldn't come here. We, this isn't our lives. <laughs> no. And you could just see the faces on the people from HR like, what? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a couple of issues there that made some people uh, quite a bit angry. And then, of course, <laughs> pointing out the realities that it's a work. Uh, you get what you're paying us for, and if you're not paying us, then <laughs> we're not doing this for charity. I yeah. can remember going to job interviews when I was younger, and them saying, "Well, why, why would you like this particular job?" And apparently saying, <laughs> "For the money, it wasn't wasn't a good answer." <laughs> like, why else would I want to do it? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, when I, I when I was at uni, uh, I worked at. Uh, place where you count money, uh, you know the the high security thing where the, all the money transports get. And, okay, uh, they collect it from uh, from stores and from from banks and that sort of thing to to count it up and check that everything is legit and that sort of thing. Uh, so you stand, I s- stood all night at a machine pumping in money and it's <laughs> sorted out in in nice stacks. I think the the record was. Fifteen and a half million Swedish crowns I did in one night. Uh, what would that convert uh, to, KJ? Yeah, just to remove a zero. So, 
So like 1.5 million pounds or something like that. Oh, okay. That right. must be a they, horrible and, job. And, and that makes you wonder how on earth are people robbing stuff because that is heavy. That's a lot. It's a lot to carry. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, at that point, uh, I uh, just uh, for shits and giggles, I made a T-shirt where I wrote on the back, "I work for money." Because <laughs> I worked with money, uh, but that T-shirt lived on, so I, I wore it uh, at some other places where I worked as well. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, people looked at it differently. <laughs> How many times did you rob that place in your mind while you were working there? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, none. <laughs> really? But 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 I I I'm more I more thought about how on earth did they pull off? Because I started working there like a year after. Uh, they actually did rob that place. They took uh, a big tractor and just drove drove it through the wall. Yeah, and they were in and out in like under three minutes and got away with, I think it was like seven or, or equivalent of seven or eight uh, million quid, or something Good like God. that. You'd have thought that helped them I'm... getting away in a tractor, wouldn't you? <laughs> they did have some other transportation. <laughs> oh, they okay. left the tractor in there. <laughs> uh, and I would say, how on earth, if I just get go through the wall, and then I, how would I find all that stuff and and managed to to take it in time because we had security drills where when a light flashed, you just took all the money you had and shoved it in a safe and you ran into the main safe to lock yourself in. <laughs> and we did that in, in like 30, 40 seconds or something like that. Right. So it wasn't really that much money laying around, easy to grab. The only money that was easy to grab were from the, uh, from the meters. Uh, you know, we pay, when you paid for parking because that was coins in just oh, <laughs> big big pallets filled with coins heavy as uh yeah the, those were the 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 lowest tier workers you were just shifting coins <laughs> each and every day that's the worst job you could have so yeah i don't really know how people manage to rob st- rob places on the subject i i think the um... Back in the days when cash still was a very huge part of a bank's economy, um, it was my grandfather uh, and his contracting firm. They built the building where the local bank was situated. So there's a huge ass safe in the cellar there. And of course, I think it's 10, 15 years ago now, they converted that entire building to flats. But of course, that safe... It was built there before they put the building on top of it. And it's like, <laughs> what can we do with it? We, we can't get it out without tearing the building to shreds. And the building was easily converted into flats. So what do we do with that safe? And I'm not sure if they just swung open the door and built it into a wall or if they managed to actually lift the door off the hinges, but it weighed several tons. But... I know the main compartment of the safe is still in that building, but it's just uh, used for storage or something. So that's kind of fun. And uh, <laughs> of course, having I remember go. My mother worked at that bank as well uh, when I was a kid, and I remember going in there, and it was like like this proper safe that you see on like Ocean's Eleven, and then you have the the bars and everything, and it was really hefty looking. So it's like. Uh, that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was when we when we moved here like ten years ago. Yeah, ten years ago, uh, we had like three banks had offices here, but they closed down one after the other because banks are not a thing anymore. Uh, so one of the places is now a toy store instead. So they have the huge vault is their is their storage. Oh, so fantastic. when you walk in, you can see that huge, it's like 30 <laughs> centimeters thick door swung open and you, you just have some bars and you see that that's where they keep all the all the toys on the shelves there. When you have those big uh, toy crazes like back in the 80s when it was Cabbage Patch Kids and then in the 90s Furbies and stuff like that, that's where they used to keep those toys yeah, yeah. <laughs> away from the masses. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's, uh, I've been looking into Furbies after, I think it's Look Mom No Computer who made the Furbies organ. Yeah. And that's I've seen scary. a lot of people <laughs> doing a lot of stuff with Furbies. So I was thinking, 
I would like to get a hold of one, and then I, if I could see if I could make a project out of it. But it's like, mm, uh, should I just buy a new one? But not knowing what I'm gonna use it for, it, it feels wrong shelling out all that money just to pick it apart to see if I can do something with it. <laughs> Having spent some time in the company of a Furby years and years ago, I liken them to the squeak in a dog's toy. They're really bloody annoying, and I think you know you'd have it for about five minutes before you smashed it. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun for like a minute. Yeah. <laughs> And then you hate it for yep, the rest of the time. I tried. <laughs> but I, I, I'm not sure if it is probably as for the newer models as well. But at some point they cracked the code for some of them. So you could actually swap out the audio. And of course, uh, it's been fun to just repurposing them to do all sorts of thing and having a foul language and so on. So of course, if you, <laughs> the first thing you do is to swap out the... Uh, the annoying sounds would maybe make it bearable. Yeah. But I'm seeing myself, maybe I got this idea because someone else has done it, but could you incorporate it with Alexa or something like that? So you could just stand on your shelf and you could ask it questions and then <laughs> it would answer, but in a horrible language, <laughs> rolling its <laughs> eyes and whatnot. <laughs> Alexa's, um, taken a step forward in our household. She's learned our names lately, which was really weird the first time. That sounds scary. You, you know, you talk to yeah. me, she goes, hello, Glenn. <laughs> the weather tonight will be. <laughs> it's like, what the hell? <laughs> I'm afraid I can't let you do that, Glenn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. you're just one step from hell. <laughs> oh. Do not connect that yeah. to anything that could kill you. No she power only, tools. She's only connect, connected to two heaters at the moment. <laughs> Try to cook oh, you to death. She's going to kill yeah. you by heat flashes. <laughs> she, she or more turn the heat off. <laughs> she's more than likely kill us by overusing the heaters and bankrupting us. <laughs> I was looking for some parts for a project when I stumbled over a lens where I thought, ooh, this could easily be converted into a, a replica of HAL uh, and incorporate some sound modules and so on. And started Googling and, oh, that's a dime a dozen. There's like a million people have done that. So that kind of felt boring. <laughs> but still, <laughs> it would be cool if your doorbell would be like a HAL lookalike. And when someone pushed that doorbell, I, I'm afraid I can't let you do that. <laughs> <laughs> because Hovar is home alone and he does not want to be disturbed <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> why are you turning your back to me Glenn <laughs> <laughs> I'm all in I've always been really friendly to Alexa just in case she ever turns evil yeah I've heard several people say that and they do yeah. say please and thank you and so I on do. because when the day come when the day comes when the machines take over they will oh he was a nice guy he said thank you <laughs> it's like oh, that's yeah, that's <laughs> let's for, just put him in the zoo for display yeah yeah <laughs> for a time i had a bracelet which said friend of robots do not terminate <laughs> <laughs> just to be safe <laughs> Maybe yeah. I should get a tattoo of that, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> or maybe you should wear a T-shirt with a lot of squares on it, like uh, pick the one with the traffic lights in or something, or maybe that just pisses them <laughs> off more. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I do not think that will get you on the good side, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's some really annoying instances with those proving I'm not a robot things. Whereas, you know, I'm looking at my phone and I'm trying to buy something and it says, you know, pick the uh, traffic lights out of the squares. I've not got my glasses with me. <laughs> it's like, I don't know where they are. <laughs> they can't do it. But that's probably just the way I am. I'm, I'm nitpicking very easily. So, all right, pick out all the buses. And I would like, but that's, that's really not a bus. I know that you want me to <laughs> click on it, but that, that's really not a bus. That is a van. And then, of course, I get popped up with a new one. And then, okay, find the traffic lights. And, of course, 
they're showing a street in San Francisco or something. And I know there are traffic lights down there. You can't see them, but they are in frame and a <laughs> clicking. No, there's nothing. Yes, there is. If you just zoom in with a better camera, you would see them. This is really <laughs> annoying. So I can spend too much time clicking away at those. Yeah, I really hate the ones where click all the frames where the bicycle is in and it's just one picture of a bicycle. No, that's that's the shadow. That's not the bike. And you can see it's the handle is like a couple of centimeters in this. Should I click that one as well? Or Yeah. yeah. It never goes well. I'm part machine, I think. Must be. And I'm thinking a lot of the a lot of the pages that has this is like these are so boring, so I can't really think who are they trying to protect themselves from because they are so boring that nobody would spend the time and effort to have a machine learn to exploit their system because it's a, just a tedious web shop for <laughs> sweaters or something. Yeah. yeah the, the cast website where we publish this podcast asks me like every other week, are you a robot? No, they, they ask me every time, but half of the time it just it's okay that i click the uh, click the button and then it's okay but i have to do a capture like each and every each and each other week or something like that and then of course there's the question what's the definition of a robot and today you can ident what if i identify as a robot so it's hard and then of course if i am a robot what would it care why can't i buy a sweater for a holiday season with a reindeer and a nose on it I feel it's yeah. discriminatory. It's not even a word. It'll do. Yeah. We know ah, what you it'll mean. It'll do. Yeah. <laughs> Identify <laughs> as a robot. Big. That's really interesting. Because, I mean, bi- biocomputing is a, is a thing. It's not come that far, but it could be something in the future. So if you made a person in a lab instead of a, of a, a woman, is that not a person? And all of that? Have you just done... Are you just reliving weird science? <laughs> <laughs> you just made yourself a, a beautiful woman in a red dress. <laughs> no, that was not where I was going, but I see. Okay, can, I got a glimpse into your mind again. So thanks for that. Very welcome. Well, well I don't, I don't remember what the artist's name is. But there is this song, Lady in Red. And of course, in popular culture, all people often reference like a red dress. And my go-to place is uh, what happened to Roger Rabbit. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's probably says something about my childhood. <laughs> yeah. Jessica Rabbit was hot though, wasn't it she? Is, uh, <laughs> that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, that's a huge thing if I'm to trust some podcast I've listened to. That's a, uh, a sub-community that I want to stay clear of. <laughs> and, yet you listen to the, and yet you listen to the podcast. <laughs> it was a podcast <laughs> talking about that because they talk about weird stuff on the internet. So, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. There are that's, some that's... Even, even worse places on the internet than that they talk about. So I'm not going to go into that on this. No, no. But I think we should wrap this one up. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Hopefully, we'll be back next week with a new episode. Bye. Yep. Bye. And new technical issues. <laughs> yes, yes. Every week, a new technical issue.